Um, so here is what we stand as right now, uh, our front page, where um, you have a, a couple of opportunities uh, to contribute. Um, I'll show you an example of one. This is our very first one way back when. Can you have the next one? Um, I'm just mentioning here the idea that, um, as I did when I was a little kid, that we're providing an opportunity for people to come in and contribute to the design and the plan for the space to stay on kind of day. So go to the next one. So, so this is our, our, our beta. This is before we ever got into Impact Engine. And I, my background is in architecture and planning, not technology. So you guys are well, well beyond <coughs> me. Um, but my partner, who's a civil engineer, decided to um, teach himself some HTML. And we created what uh, we like to call our Frankenstein monster, which was a static website with a whole bunch of widgets plugged in. He did that at you know, 1 a.m. onward, and then I'd come back around at 6 a.m., check it, do all my designing stuff, and irritate the hell out of him. But anyway, so we, we, we worked in this town called Plainfield, Illinois, the southwest suburb. Um, at one point in time, it probably had around 12,000 people, and then it just blew up uh, population-wise. And if you know Plainfield or any of the western side of Chicago, there's Illinois Route 59 travels north and south through it. And when it hits Plainfield, it becomes what's called Division Street. And I, I, no other time in the projects that I've worked on has a street meant so much to what's actually happening. It's Illinois. Department of Transportation, or IDOT, and their infinite wisdom, um, decided in order to fix congestion for a community like this, they needed to add lanes. And when they added lanes um, to each side of the corridor, um, Division Street, as it travels through the heart of the community, they used eminent domain to take away property on either side, businesses and residences. And um, they were appropriately compensated, but I don't think too many people understood the after effects once it had been constructed and the line, lanes had been widened, what that would actually do to the place where they lived. So the project was completed and demo permits and for sale signs went up all down the corridor. Um, what was a, a nice, um, it was pretty walkable, um, I don't know if a whole lot of people were biking, unfortunately, became a extremely unsafe place where trucks and like, um, I don't have a before picture, but the after is good enough. Um, so the outrage was that not only the people that live directly on it, but the people on, it, on the back side of those homes and just sort of a ripple effect started to see what this was going to do to the value of their neighborhood, um, certainly their property. And so they marched on town hall and said, um, you know, what's, what's the deal here? What's the plan? How are we going to fix this? And their answer was, we don't have a plan. We didn't budget for this. We ourselves are strapped for cash. We couldn't get ahead of this. And uh, we don't know what to do. I connected with them. They connected with me. And we were able to put this out there for them to use. And uh, go to the next one. There's another beautiful picture of what this has become. I, I, I absolutely love this sign. I mean, that's, that's your permission to walk across the street sign. There's a better one across from the Art Institute. It's in a bank the driver. It's <laughs> <laughs> wow. Thanks awesome. for not running me over. That's awesome. Wow. Um, I mean, there's probably a good spot to collect, start collecting. Maybe you, well, that sign has since been knocked over by a driver, but <laughs> <laughs> you might thank him. Yeah. 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 Um, so anyway, if you go to the next one. So when we put this application out there, as ugly as it was, um, simply by asking a question in a community of uh, 30 to 40,000, that had never really been asked before to participate in a process like this. Um, originally, the city council thought, well, there's no way that you're going to get anyone between the ages of 13 and 18, other than those in the age bracket of 13 to 18 and teens, to work on this, provide you with any input, but we're going we're gonna to take a chance on you. They did, and 
you know, one of our most active members of LEAF here um, at the age of 71. And then there was Katie at age 26. Both of them had the same amount of interesting feedback um, that pushed us further and further down towards the Fisheries Project. Uh, you go to the next one. 